welcome back to another episode of our life seasons where we talk about the different seasons of life and how we grow through it. I'm your host Wen and if, if you have not heard, from now on, I'll be wrapping up each episode with a relevant quote, affirmation or question to ponder so be sure to stay till the end. So if you've been loving the podcast episodes, do leave a review of this podcast or whichever platform that you're on and let me know which topics are your favourite. So, getting on to today's episode on relationship or my thoughts on staying single, I don't think I ever talked about relationship like in a full episode before, but this episode is actually inspired by one of the recent conversations that I had with a friend about being single before going back into the dating scene again. So let me just put it out there. I get so freaking frustrated at how much people are getting hurt by not prioritizing themselves, not loving themselves to know that they get to choose as well. I feel like so many of us think that we don't have a choice and uh, we just have to make do with whatever that we are being handed. No, okay? You get to choose your standards, the non-negotiables that you stand by, okay? And you get to stand by those things. And I don't say this lightly or think that it's actually easy. No, because I used to be someone or I used to be like that as well. And I will share my story in just a little bit coming out of the side of, you know, constant giving and expecting. Looking at my friends who were where I was pisses me off because I know that there is so much more that they can offer and that you can actually offer back to yourself and find the joy on being on the other side of receiving and starting to treat yourself exactly the way you've always wanted to be treated instead of waiting for someone else to do that for you. So I decided for today's episode to be an episode on what I actually wish someone would have told me or rather what I wish that, you know, the advice that I would have listened to to save myself from so much heartbreak and frustration. But with that said, I do not regret any relationship that I was in or regret, regret gro- going through all these heartbreaks, okay? And if you're listening to this, I hope this is you choosing to prioritize yourself starting from this episode starting today. So a little bit con- a little bit of a context and background of my past relationships. I have been in two four-year relationships. I was 14 and 19 respectively. So if you do the math, you know that it almost was like back to back because I didn't allow myself to rest like back then. I'm not sure whether or not it's because like I was younger and I was a little bit immature. I wouldn't know how to deal with situations like that. But I would say that I used to find myself not being able to stay single, rushing into another relationship shortly after one ended. Some would call it a rebound, but I call it avoidance, okay? Getting into another relationship before processing and, you know, knowing what is it that you actually want is just a way for you to fill up that void from your previous relationship. Believe it or not, we often carry our old traumas or insecurities from our past relationship to another one. You go on like, you know, searching for the next relationship, looking to solve that problem that, you know, without actually understanding why it even exists in the first place or what do you actually want out of that relationship of that person or what do you actually really truly desire, like your heart desires, okay? So I want to give you an example of my very own example, okay? My first relationship was with a very nice guy, a provider, very giving. But back then, I felt like, you know, he kind of like like ambition. And I'm someone that is very ambitious, if you don't know already by now. So that was something that was like an ache to me and I couldn't really take it. We couldn't see eye to eye on a lot of things um, that, you know, relates back to career progression or like ambition in, in general. And I was only like... 14, 15, 16, 17. So I thought, okay, I want someone who is ambitious. And then shortly after, I went into my second relationship with a guy that told me, you know, all about his ambition and had some like entrepreneurial background. So I thought, great, this is exactly what I wanted, which my previous relationship lacked, right? Guess what? It didn't work out still because what I thought I wanted, which was just ambition, was not everything. Okay, I was very shocked myself as well. I thought that this relationship was going to be the one. And because 
ambition was something that I really, really looked for in a guy and I thought that, okay, this relationship might work out just because of how ambitious he is. But I failed to take into account that as time passed, as we grow, especially at this age of, you know, mid-20s or early 20s, you're still figuring life out. There's so much life-changing things that's happening for us, whether or not it's going um, into the workforce or whether or not um, you're actually entering, like, college. I think at different stages in life, you will be different and you have different mindsets, you have different take on life and different perspective on life. So I think that was kind of the thing that I didn't really think of. I thought that, you know, um, as long as that guy was ambitious, was ambitious, I think everything was going to work out well and I was so wrong, okay? I didn't give myself the time to heal and ask myself what is it that I truly want and to be fair, We were still really young and like I said, we're always growing and we're still growing, okay? So, and mind you, this don't have to be like a short-term relationship because both my relationships were four years each. So yes, it can be a relationship that you genuinely thought um, was what you wanted but it turned out to just be the opposite. Uh, It doesn't have to be a situationship or like a short one, okay? Like I mentioned, it doesn't have to be a fling, it doesn't have to be like a rebound because it's not to me. So I used to be someone that gives and gives and gives and gives without the expectations of receiving to fill the void within me. Okay, resentment is what I got back. Not satisfaction or love, but resentment and anger because my expectations were not met. I was in this constant fight with myself or rather my partner because I never felt like anything was ever enough. Anything that what he did or anything that, you know, I contributed, I felt like it wasn't reciprocated, it wasn't enough because I have so much expectations of myself and my partner. And it just felt like these expectations were too high for him to reach. It was something that it wasn't, it was no one's fault, but rather the expectations just wasn't like met, right? Like we didn't have, um, we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. And yeah, so especially when, we have different love languages. His was gift gifting and mine was physical touch and quality time. So we couldn't understand each other and that resulted in a lot of like bottled up anger and just pushing our emotions aside, especially for my side because I avoid conflict and I try my best to not fight because we think that, you know, we should be able to compromise in a relationship for a relationship to work out. But now here's the thing. A relationship is not about compromising and pushing your needs aside, but about understanding yourself and your partner and being able to communicate that, like your emotions, your perspective and your needs and feel hurt, okay? It's not about compromising. So now it's different, right? Like since my last relationship, I have been actually single and not dating by choice for slightly more than a year now. And I can say that now I'm so, so, so much clearer on what my standards are and what I want out of a relationship and learn to trust my intuition. I swear there's so such a big difference as compared to who I was when, you know, prior to actually healing, prior to 2023 and who I am now. I am so shocked that I'm actually happy being alone because I mentioned in, you know, my episodes, a lot of them saying that I struggle or I used to struggle with not being able to be alone just because I was so fearful of what's going to come up, like what my thoughts are. And I just wasn't comfortable being around myself because I've never had the time or rather I never took the time to sit down and just be with myself and to allow my inner child to come out and play or rather to work on a lot of like the emotions that I might have bottled in my heart for the longest period of time and then which resulted in a lot of like resentment and anger within myself like I was someone that was so angry I was someone that holds to my standards but in a way that was so detrimental to my mental health and it was only in 2023 and only when I make the conscious effort of telling myself that okay enough of the dating scene I just want to be with myself and I want to focus on myself no one else but myself and pour the love that I have that I want to give to people back to myself first. I think that was when it really changes a lot of things. And which is why like it leads me to the next point of there is no shame, okay? No shame in being single. Matter of fact, cherish this time. Like take this time to get clarity, to take care of your inner child, to focus on satisfying no one. But you, because this is going to be a time where you will look back and really appreciate this 
alone time by spending the time with yourself now it will help you in your future relationship okay because now you're so much clearer on your boundaries and who you want to call into your life and what are your standards what are your expectations and you're able to actually communicate them clearly and know that you know these are my standards these are my um, expectations and boundaries do not step on them and to anyone who wants to play with it you know to actually put yourself first and to say that look this is not gonna work out because this is not something that I accept in my life, right? You hold yourself to that standard and you hold others to that standard as well. So making it a choice to stay single for as long as, you know, I needed until I was ready was exactly what I needed. And I feel like was exactly what, it's exactly what everyone else who is struggling to like hop from one relationship to another and not feeling satisfied or not feeling loved or rather you're looking love outside of yourself, I would say, that making the choice to stay single for as long as you need is one of the choices that you need to do, okay? So in my case, it was as if like the universe was actually trying to make it a point that I needed to be alone like in 2023 to remove any and every guy that I see romantically out of my life or meeting even new people, okay? Yes, it all happened at once and I felt alone and I was very busy with work. Was I hurt? Yes. Was I pissed? Of course, I felt like a drug addict without her fix. And in this case, a girl who had so much love to give, but no one to give to, okay? And I needed, um, I ended up like having no choice but to direct that focus and love back to myself because literally there was like the slimmest and almost zero chance of me meeting someone new because the company that I was working for back then only hired females based on the nature of like the industry and other than work I was with my family or I was alone okay I don't go out for social events I don't have any social events to attend to I don't do dating apps just because that's not what I you know would want to consider and that was exactly what I needed without knowing it like putting the love and focusing on myself, putting the spotlight on myself for 2023 was something that I needed, but I didn't know that I needed, okay? I thought, like, um, I would go back to my ways of just, you know, healing for a short period of time and then moving on to, like, the next relationship. So, what I did uh, do is that with all the love that was bottling inside of me, I started to pour them into, like, my friends, my families, and eventually, I came to realize that I had to do something about this emptiness and void reading me. Because as much as I try to focus on giving and pouring all this love that I have that is built up within my body and started to give them to the people around me, like, my family members or even my friends and just, like, um, to my dog, <laughs> I realized that this emptiness was still there. I still feel this void, this hole in my heart that I was constantly trying to fill up and I only allowed people's love to fill that up. I'm not saying that my friend, my family and friends' love wasn't able to fill that up, but rather romantically wise, I think I was looking for someone to be able to like provide for me and to heal this side of me when the fact is that no one else can heal you other than yourself. And I am the only person and I know now that I'm the only person that could heal and close up this void within me. So that still wasn't going anywhere, right? Like this void within me. So even after redirecting like my love to friends and family, unknowingly, through my New Year's resolution in 2023 to focus like on self-care, I started pouring that love back to myself, healing my inner child, my wound from my past relationships and start to learn a lot more about myself, like my needs and wants, my standards and expectations, my love language, what makes me truly happy and what are my boundaries. And all this took me, I would say, like even until now, like I feel like right now I've actually, I wouldn't say I completely healed, but I'm like almost there. And from where I started to where I am now, I would say it took me literally more than like a year, a little bit closer to a year to really start to be comfortable alone and to really heal myself and to know that, you know, it's okay. Even if at the end of the day, I do not enter a new relationship or rather I am alone, I have to live alone. I am technically not alone because I have my friends and family that I know that will always be there for me. And the most important part is that I have myself. I can live with myself now comfortably to know that no matter what happens around me or outside of myself, I know that deep down within me, I am able to provide this love and this calm and this peace within myself and I can be happy alone. I can be happy 
with myself. I am happy with myself right now without having anyone else's love because all the things that are outside of me is just like a bonus, okay? what How I treat myself is exactly something that I really needed to learn because I feel like looking back, I didn't really respect myself. I didn't respect my time. I didn't respect my the love that I have for, you know, myself. I didn't even have any and I didn't respect like the values that I have, okay? So that was something that I really had to learn in 2023. So... When you don't see that being single is a bad thing, as a sign that, rather you see it as a sign that, um, you know, it's time for you to start healing. You don't see it as a sign that no one wants you or, you know, you're being abandoned. You start to tend to the wound, the scars in your heart that has been reopened, right? You heal it once and for all, okay? During this time, you're not in search for anything. You put your dating life on do not disturb, on busy mode, and go into no contact. If you need to properly grieve your past relationship, please provide yourself with the space to just do that, okay? I can't stress this enough. Once a relationship has ended, especially the ones that ended on like a happy note, please, 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 for the love of God, go no contact. That means no texting, no calling, no interacting on social media, no emailing, no hearing about them from mutual friends. You let it be known, okay? And no going to their usual place and trying to meet them coincidentally, open inverted, which come on, we know you're better than that, okay? And I say this with so much love because I know that there are certain people who are still friends with their exes and that is not something that I go against, but rather I would say that Before trying to become or stay friends with your exes, I would say take the time to go no contact, to finally heal and to know that, you know, you have actually detached yourself from that situation, that relationship and you have healed from it, that you can move past it, okay? There are a lot of times that, you know, a relation, like you can't stay friends with your exes just because of all these emotions that are tied to it. But for some people, they can um, stay like friends with their ex for me personally I can't because I'm someone that is pretty emotional and I am an empath I just can't like yeah I it's just not a thing for me okay but if it's a thing for you just make sure that you have actually healed completely before trying to stay um in contact with your exes because a lot of times I've seen like friends or even people saying that they are friends with their exes but deep down the through their actions and through the words that they you know um, that they use or rather like how they act around them it is so clear that there is still some sort of attachment that that is there that they are using I am still friends with my ex as an, ex, as an excuse to keep in contact with their ex and I think it is not beneficial for both parties especially if you are healing and oftentimes what I see is that once the the, whoever moves on first into like getting into another relationship the other one always ends up getting hurt okay because they thought that they have moved on but to see like physically your partner moving on or rather your ex-partner moving on with someone else it's a total different thing okay if you have not healed properly if you have not tried to take the time to heal this is going to be something that's going to be a slap in your face and it's going to be so damn hard for you to take so i would say I can't stress this enough. Please go on no contact um, no matter like how you end the relationship, okay? So don't try to play the rules and be sneaky because the next thing you know, the thing that is sneaking back into your life is that attachment feeling, the need to seek love outside of yourself, the fear of being alone. They're gonna come sneaking back and you'll be back to square one, okay? So we don't want that. So that's why I stress a lot on going no contact and I know that this is something that a lot of people are talking about but it's really something that you have to do for yourself, okay, for you to heal. So it can feel like an extreme move and I know it hurts especially for, you know, if you're coming out of like a long-term relationship and still working to get over like a breakup. But the truth is that cutting off contact with an ex is like the fastest and most effective way for you to truly move on and you are able to actually turn this pain into something far more like empowering and that is personal growth, okay? Move with the pain, flow with it, and allow the pain to wash you to the other side of it, which is healing and enjoyment, like joy. And when you are ready, the unexpected person or the unexpected relationship will enter your life, or you'll subconsciously just be putting yourself um back into the dating scene again, just with your energy, or whether or not it's consciously, whichever way, right? 
Now, like my friend, you're probably going to be uns- uh, like thinking, okay, that's all cool and stuff, but how would you know when you're actually ready? And that's a very great question because let's talk about the signs to know when you're ready, okay? The biggest one, the biggest one that I am so freaking like, I just want to get it into your mind and your head is that when you stop asking yourself this question of when you're ready, you're ready, okay? I hate to give like the vague answers of, you know, you'll just know, but this is an exception an exception because when it comes to love or relationship I believe in trusting my own intuition I've worked with myself enough to know that my intuition will never harm me and it always turns out to be true okay so if you're asking this question I know that there is some sort of rush that you feel getting into another relationship like it or not know it or not you feel like you need a relationship to feel loved to feel complete okay because that was exactly how I feel felt and because when you pour that love that you expect from that relationship back to yourself you no longer feel like you need to know when or if a relationship is even gonna come your way because you are so magnetic that now you get to choose okay you get to choose who comes who goes you get to choose like your boundaries your standards and what type of like things can you accept and you can't accept So the day that you stop pondering about whether or not you're ready, you will be ready, okay? Now let's get on to some of like the more tangible signs of when you're ready, okay? Number two of signs of when you're ready is that you start asking the right questions, okay? Instead of asking, am I good enough? You ask, is this what I want, okay? So you know what your standards are and how like you expect your partner or your future partner to actually treat you and you know how you're going to treat the relationship, okay? You start to manifest without attachment and I went into details in last week's episode on, you know, the journey to surrendering and you releasing the need to know when it's coming or how it's coming. So perhaps you stop looking for, you know, confirmation from TikTok astrologers or tarot readings or psychics to tell you how your love life is, okay? I know and I've been there where... Especially right now, you know, when you're scrolling through TikTok, there may be like tarot readings to a certain collective and in that reading, in that particular reading, it might be telling you that, oh, you can manifest your ex coming back or someone is coming back into your life, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all these are positivity. Don't get me wrong. I love all this. But what I want to say is that don't don't get too caught up in it and allow it to run your life or rather allow it, allow it to stop you from healing because having hope and just thinking that, you know, you want to manifest someone, an ex or a relationship back to you, something that has not been working or rather that has not worked, you want to manifest it back into you, into your life just because you feel so comfortable and you just don't want to be alone. You don't want to be this unknown and like this unknown territory. I would say that this is going to stop you from healing, okay? Don't get too caught up in it and allow it to run your life, please. Because the only person in this life with you is you yourself and the universe or the higher power whoever you you know you believe in you stop looking for answers because you trust that whenever the time is right you'll meet someone that you need to meet and it will be in divine timing okay so when you start to ask like the right questions and when you put yourself first that's when you know you're ready it's a sign okay if not it just means that you're not ready yet or they are not ready yet, your pa- your specific partner is not ready yet, carry on working on yourself and trust that they are working on themselves too. So to be like the very best version for yourselves, for each other, and when you both are ready, the universe will bring you two together, okay? You don't need to worry about when you're going to meet that person or how you're going to be- meet that person. What you need to worry on is whether or not you are ready, okay? And working on getting yourselves ready because when you are ready and when the universe thinks that you're ready, everything will just come into flow, okay? You no longer have this mentality of like, oh my god, like I need to know, I need to be in control, I want to know how I'm going to meet that person. And because of all this or this controlling like freak that we are as humans, which is very normal, we try to find answers through other platforms, you know, like tarot, reading or astrologers or psychics and stuff like that okay um i believe in all those but like i like i mentioned time and time again do not let that run your life okay because there are so many other factors in this lifetime and yeah sometimes other people which are like other tarot readers or other astrologers or other psychics they might not be the most honest i'm not saying all but some so just be very careful with your energy okay number three of signs 
that you're ready is you stop settling. Oh my god, I can't stress this enough. You don't you stop saying, you know, I don't know what I want. You know what you want and what you don't accept and what you can accept. You are clear on your boundaries and standards. You know what you want, okay? So you don't settle for the minimal like effort. You don't settle for less. You don't settle just because you feel like finally there's someone that is willing to put their time and energy on you. You don't do that, okay? So now, standards and expectations are very different things. They are two very different things. So standards are your non-negotiables, okay? Example, being respectful towards everyone, being honest and trusting each other. Expectations are something that, um, while well, expectations are actually something that you work with your partner, okay? For example, giving flowers on dates or paying for every single meal. Everyone has different expectations and standards. And I would say that for some people, the expectations that, that I've just given above can be a standard for them based on whatever your love language is but whatever it is you get to set the rules okay you get to set what your standards are what your expectations are and you don't give anyone else the power to change that okay you can take references here and there but our standards and expectations wouldn't be exactly the same as compared to you know probably our friends expectations or standards because like i mentioned our love language is different what we expect out of life is different as well who we are in person is also different okay so know that just have like your list of expectations and standards and know that your standards are non-negotiable okay do not try to let anyone talk you into Treating like your non-negotiables as something that it's, you know, it's okay. Like you could actually change them. Whereas your expectations is something that you need to tell your partner or rather your future partner or whoever that you're considering that, hey, these are my expectations. And if let's just say, you know, um, your standards can be met, but just expectations can't, then that's when you start to work on trying to, you know, work something out, something that works for both of you. Okay. So I would say that, As much as I say that, do not settle for less. You won't settle for less when you are so confident in yourself and you know that, you know, your expectations or your standards are not too much. You're not too much and it's not too high, okay? Because people will go, and we've seen it on TikTok videos. We have seen it everywhere. People can actually go like a mile for you. They can go so far down for you. They can do all sorts of things that they can do for you if if they feel like you're worth it. And like I said, a lot of times, like self-worth is... How, however you deem self-worth is, it's really up to you. Like, you deem yourself as worthy and it is what it is, okay? Don't let anyone tell you whether or not you're worthy. But, like, what I want to say is that if they want to, they actually will. So, you find yourself going into this girl boss mode of, okay, here are my list of standards and if you can't meet them, then it's okay. The door is right there. You allow yourself to not attach to that person even though no matter how long you have talked to that person or how, how much you have met that person, you allow yourself to hold that standards high and tell them that, okay, if you can't or if they show you that they can't meet your standards and expectations, then I would say, just let them know you're okay to go, like the door is right there, that you're okay to let go of whoever it is that do not bring you peace, okay? You don't waste your time on people that do not respect you and your boundaries. You don't allow anyone else to have the power over your energy and your emotions. You listen and you observe. You listen to your heart and your intuition and you observe their actions, not their words, okay? You won't shift your plans just because, you know, they want to meet you whenever they feel like it. You no longer are the, I'm always here for you whenever you need me type of girl. I'm not saying it has to be like a business where, you know, you have to book appointments or, you know, set up appointments and stuff like that. What I'm saying is that you don't go ditching all your plans that you have for yourself just because someone else calls you at random wee hours and says that they want to meet you out of nowhere, right? You prioritize your needs and you respect yourself. Follow your heart, your intuition, not someone else's schedule, okay? That's when you start to put yourself as priority. You know that you're constantly putting yourself first so that you can actually give out more value to people, okay? Because if you're constantly the type of girl of like saying, or boy or guy or whatever, that you're saying that, you know, I'll always be there whenever, what you're essentially doing is that you're constantly putting people's needs first and you push your needs to the back. One day, it's going to bite you in the ass. One day, you're going to be like so drenched, like so tired and so burnt out because you're constantly running around in circles for other people and guess what? People are not going to respect that, okay? Just imagine someone 
constantly being around you, yes, you may appreciate their presence, but the thing is that you have never actually, you will never actually go like a further step of really appreciating that person and taking into account of, you know, how that person has always been there for you until something big happens or until that person is no longer there, right? It's just humans that we are so busy making decisions in our lives and we are so busy living our lives, worrying about things, fearing about things that we don't really sit down and appreciate like little things in life. Okay, so I would say don't ever, 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 ever shift your plans just because someone wants to meet you like instantly. Okay, know your worth, know your priorities and honour your own words. Number four of signs that you know you're ready is when you know like your default energy. Okay, so know which energy you are like gravitating towards or rather you your default energy is so there are two types of energy masculine and feminine energy so for those of you who are like hearing this for the first time it's not gender specific okay feminine and masculine and energies are not gender specific and i'll go into it a little bit more but you start to feel more comfortable you know um and find someone that is balancing this out for you okay you know your energy and you find someone that can balance this out for you this will actually really help you to uh, know like your relationship and help you to handle a relationship because this applies to you if you're also in a relationship knowing that you and your partner's default energy is super important okay so now moving on to the feminine and masculine energy like i mentioned it's not gender specific everyone has both energies okay and there will be one that you gravitate towards to or you feel more safe in so some people who are in their masculine energy which is like the providing side of you tend to find someone who is in their feminine energy which is someone who receives and nurture and vice versa okay so if you're very much in your masculine energy all the time which is being imp- being independent taking care of yourself doing everything for yourself you realize that you want to find someone who allows you to be in your feminine just because Um, it's a simple I love to give and I want someone to be able to receive concept okay and if you're very much in your feminine energy and you love to receive then you'll find some yourself attracted to someone who it feels like you know they are in their masculine or rather who wants to provide for you so knowing your energy really helps you to be clear on the type of partner that you want do you want to be provided for or do you feel strongly about providing for your partner so if two masculine individuals actually get together, there could be an imbalance and will result into fights, okay? Because both wants to provide and both has this very like do-do-do and go-go-go like um, energy and it's not very, like there's not much emotions that and time to sit with your emotions and, you know, like foster that love. So know your default energy and work towards being in that energy. If you want to be provided for, learn to lean into your your feminine energy, your energy of being able to receive, which means allowing people to take care of you sometimes. And I'm not saying to rely on others, but rather to be open to receiving the love and gestures that people want to give you, okay? Because when you are in your masculine energy, we block ourselves from receiving. So if you want someone to provide for you, if you want a masculine energy or rather a masculine character to provide for you, then I would say lean into your feminine energy. Learn how to work with your feminine energy, okay? And people can sense that energy, all right? Number five of signs that you're ready is you start taking care of yourself first. You value and enjoy your time and the activities that, you know, you enjoy doing alone. Maybe it's reading, maybe it's going out for walks, maybe it's binge watching your favorite show, maybe it's playing with your dog, maybe it's doing facial masks while journaling, whatever that is. You start to take care of your own needs first. You don't care if anyone else or someone else needs you, you know that you need time for yourself and you need to be there for yourself more than anyone else and you have to fill your own cup first before you provide any value to anyone else and I talk about this in episode 6 of the podcast, okay? So, next is that I want to talk about the trend on orange peel theory and, you know, when little miss, I can do it myself meets Mr. I know you can but let me. It's like this has been so viral on TikTok. I've been seeing like so many posts on this and I want to talk about this trend, okay? Want to know something? You won't meet Mr. I know you can let... I know you can but let me if you're still in doubt, okay? If you're still getting into relationships without clearly knowing what you want 
if you're asking yourself when will I be ready for you know a relationship or when will I be ready to actually um, manifest that partner or if you're worried that you won't find one for you why because all these statements has something in common and that is the lack of self-love and respect for yourself okay know that without self-love and respect you won't meet mr i know you can but let me because if you're still in doubt and you don't know what you want in a relationship you it's just it just doesn't work that way you won't be able to manifest like someone who wants to provide for you or rather someone who is able to provide for you because you don't even know and you can't put across your needs and your requirements or your standards up front okay if you don't respect yourself it's very hard for someone to be able to look at you and want to respect you so let me break it down for you notice that we all love to be pampered whether or not you identify as, as a male or a female or whatever we all want to be pampered as humans right it feels good let's not deny it but get this the first part of the statement is miss i can do it myself and this is the key when you don't rely on anyone don't expect anyone to do anything you know that in this world that the only person that can meet your needs 100% without fail and give you the love that your heart and soul aches for is not Mr. I know you can but let me or Mr. Peel your oranges for you. It's you, okay? You are the one that you can rely on and you are the one that will be able to provide your needs 100% and provide the love that your soul craves for. You are the one, no one else, okay? You don't put any expectations on anyone and that is the most attractive part. Believe it or not, not physically, but rather the energy is so magnetizing that people want to respect you and treat you the way you treat yourself. Because remember, Everyone is a mirror of you. You set the precedence of how you deserve or you want to be treated and people follow. But you first need to take the lead. Okay, there are definitely more than like five signs that you're ready. But most important one is to love yourself the way you want to be loved. And I can't stress this enough. The most important relationship is the relationship you have with yourself. Until you learn to love yourself, you can't love others. The love that you desperately seek from others, give it to yourself. Or the love that you give others but they are not ready to reciprocate and you feel so frustrated by, pour that love back to yourself. You just know and you stop searching not because you don't believe in love anymore but because you learn that true love and in order for you to feel love at all times is by loving yourself the way you want to be loved. You learn to love yourself so much that you no longer need to search for love because you give yourself that. It is here, within your heart, okay? Anytime you need it, you know that you can turn to yourself for that love that you used to look to someone else for and the love you receive from others will all just be a bonus because what matters or what is your priority is the love that you give yourself, okay? My advice, don't be in a relationship or even dabble into dating someone before you know how to love yourself and expect nothing from others. Be that person that you expect of your partner so they don't have an excuse of not being that person for you. Hold yourself and your partner to the same standards, not higher, not lower, the same. Whatever you want, give yourself that first. Show them how you want to be treated through the way you treat yourself, through your actions, and this is exactly what you will receive. And if it's more than what you expect, good for you. But it should always be a bonus. Remember, a bonus, not expectations. And expect that from your partner as well, okay? For them to be able to treat themselves well and to love themselves well to show you how to actually treat them. Because when both of you know exactly what you want and when both of you know that pouring love and prioritizing your own needs and your own wants first is not being selfish. Because when you take care of yourself, then you're able to take care of people around you. Okay, same goes for a relationship, same goes for your partner. So your partner should be able to understand that as well. Okay, so oftentimes, we overcompensate because we think that we don't deserve to be loved or that, you know, we are not good enough that someone giving us, like, our attention, someone giving us their attention is already, like, more than everything that we could we could ask for, right? And we actually love harder. We try to give all we have left to someone else, hoping that they will be the one that fuels that void within you. No, no, and no, okay? You got this the other way around. Someone should appreciate that you are even giving them the, your attention. You deserve so much love, and the love should come from no one but you. And I will say it again and again and again, okay? The love should come from no one but you. And I hope that this episode will actually change something in you 
knock some sense into your beautiful mind so that you can actually start to ask yourself, what is it that you really want? Ask your heart, tell me, how can I love you? Okay, so before I end this episode, I want to leave you with this question to think about as you're in your single era or as you're healing yourself. I want you to take out a piece of paper and pen, um, write down this question and let the answers flow to you. Okay, ready? The question is, what exactly is it that you're afraid of if you let go of this relationship or this person? Let me repeat that again. What exactly is it that you're afraid of if you let go of this relationship or this person? Is it the fear of being alone? Is it not knowing what to do with the love that you have to give? Is it the fear of not being able to live without them? Is it to avoid taking responsibility to heal? What is it? I want you to scratch beyond the surface because in order to heal and find remedy, you need to first know what exactly needs healing and the cause of it. Okay, so that's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoy this episode. And again, I'd love it if you could share your answers to this question with me in the comments or if you have any burning questions or topics that you want me to cover, feel free to drop me a DM at Instagram on Instagram at our live seasons or comment on whichever platform that you're listening to and I would love to get back to you. I have been re- receiving DMs from you guys um, and I just want to say that I'm very, 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 from the bottom of my heart, I'm very thankful for all the comments that I've been receiving and just you guys telling me that you love episodes like that or you just relate to every episode and it honestly is the reason why I have this podcast and I don't know, I just am very grateful whenever I wake up in the morning and I see a DM in my, in our live season's Instagram and just seeing how much you guys love episodes and have been listening or binging to episodes like that and asking me to keep up the good work and just encouraging me and spreading this positivity. I just want to say a huge thank you because without you guys, I wouldn't be here. Without you guys, episodes like that would not come up. And... Yeah, I am so glad that we're on this healing journey together. And this is my very first episode on relationships. I'm not a relationship expert, but I would say that I really hope that you enjoy it. And I hope that you learn a thing or two out of it. Or rather, if you are in your single era and if you are healing, I send you so much love and just enjoy this time. Okay, enjoy this time to heal. Enjoy this time to be alone and just enjoy this time to pour yourself so much love and trust me that right relationship for you will come that right person for you will come you don't have to worry whether or not it's gonna come it will come okay trust that once you're healing yourself and once you're healing all these wounds that you have in your heart all these voids that you want someone to fill once you're actually giving yourself that attention and healing it within yourself know that the universe is gonna give you people or give you relationships that is what you want okay it's not something that you know you gotta be worried about because like i said you are dancing with like the universe okay it's a 50 50 dance you put in an effort to heal the universe will give you exactly what you need and what you want all right so i hope that you enjoyed today's episode and i'll see you in the next one bye